Hey, Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. How are you doing? Okay. It looks like we're recording already. Is that yeah, I did. I had an um, sent out panelists invitation, so oh. we started, and we'll just wait, I guess, for everyone to join. Okay. It might be a short meeting. Right. And uh, Steve isn't going to be here. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, he emailed me a little bit ago. Yeah, and I think the important thing will be just to, I, know, I think we have like two or three applications that it'll probably be submitted shortly. So we'll have to schedule a hearing. Oh, fairly soon again? Yeah, 98 Fearing is proposing to come back. Oh. <laughs> They're proposing a second unit on the property. 98 um, fearing. Mm. They had they had been I think that, I think I think they came to the commission a while ago and just I think it was last summer or fall to just discuss their their plan. Oh, and, these are know, the people who wanted to do the the massive the apartment the two or mm -hmm. three duplexes or apartment or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the rest of it's, you know, smaller things like uh, mini splits or new windows or things. Okay. Do you know what the proposal is for 98 clearing? It's to do, it's in a, you know, like a an apartment building. It has three or four units. Mm. Um, and it looks, I mean, they've, they've really changed the proposal. Uh, so it looks, it looks like a second house on the property. Not, you know, I think originally it was a much, much, much bigger building or buildings. And so now they've changed it. Uh, but yeah, they have to still go to the ZBA as well. But big enough to have three units. So we're talking 12 more people living on the property. Yeah, I mean it's a fair. I forget exactly what it, how big it is, but right, something like that. It's pretty big. Hey, Nicole. Hi. 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 Well, it's three hundred one. Hopefully, we get two more commissioners. Yeah, Karen's so not going to be here. Uh, right. And Steve. Steve is not, right. Oops, someone's trying to reach me. Steve can't. No, he just emailed a bit ago and said he's pretty sick. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, just click on it, and Nate will make you. He'll he'll turn you into a panelist. How magically! Greed is having trouble getting on. Oh, I think you just have to click on it, and then you'll join. He said. She said it says it expired. Um, she might be cl clicking on. The one from today? 3038? The one from last time, maybe. Yeah. Uh, did you get the the message from him today with, an, with a Zoom connection? Is that Greta? I'll just forward it again. Yeah, yeah it's Greta. Yeah. Oh, she's got it. OK, use right. that one. OK, bye. Right. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, I think some people schedule, I mean, I we never, I, I wouldn't do it for a board or committee, but some people schedule a recurring meeting. So the link is valid for every one. But the way we have to reschedule everything, I don't, I wouldn't do that. Elizabeth, uh, I read your book and I've now recommended it to everybody I know. It's the most fascinating story. And it's so, oh, I, I just couldn't get over it. I want to do the hike now, too. But. Yeah, um, I was just up in Haydenville this morning. Um, we're putting, um, we're, there's all these activities for the 150th. Oh. And we're putting at least 75 markers all the way down the flood route with a little explanation of what happened at that spot. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and there's going to be a big ceremony um, at the, Williamsburg Congregational Church on May 18th, and they're going to reenact the horse ride. Oh, oh my gosh. 
Okay, I want to know we about had a horse. <laughs> we got a horse. Well, I think it would make a great movie. You know, I've often thought that, and others have said that. So, it, I had I, make... I had no idea um, no, that that had all happened. Know. I and know. historically, in terms of how it changed how the state works, it's really a very interesting story. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Well, it's 3.04 we started, so the, it, this is being recorded. I'm not sure if there's any more commissioners that we would expect. I think this might be it. Yeah, I, Karen's not going to be here and Steve's not going to be here, so I think that we are they. So uh, I'll call the meeting to order then. Um, and I'll start with the roll call. Uh, so, Nicole? Here. Elizabeth? Here. Greta? Here. Bruce? Here. And uh, I'm Nancy Ratner, and I'm here. And we're here to uh, hear one request of a stall and a new interior door. Uh, and then we have some other bylaw changes that we're going to discuss and East Amherst as a potential historic district. Um, this is a, a Zoom meeting, uh, and anyone from the public who wants to access it can do so. Um, Nate, do you want to begin with 19 McClellan? Sure. So 19 McClellan, it was a request to install a new exterior door, uh, covered stairs and lighting at the kind of rear of the structure. We talked about it on February 13th. The applicant has since asked for this to be withdrawn, so they're not going to move forward with it. Uh, but since we've already started opening the hearing, the commission has to vote to allow the withdrawal. Uh, you could still, you know, vote to deny it, but you know they've indicated they're not going to move forward with the project. Do I have a motion to uh, prove that they withdraw, or a motion to deny? Elizabeth, or I support their withdrawal. Is that what that what it would be? Yeah, yeah I, I move to support the withdrawal. I move to support their withdrawal. And I second, second it. Second. Okay. Is there a discussion? Okay, let's move to a vote then. Uh, Bruce? Aye. Rita? Aye. Uh, Elizabeth? Aye. Nicole? Yes. And I also support it. So uh, we will allow them to withdraw their, their proposal. Uh, question. I, I thought Steve was joining the meeting. Uh, uh, Steve is ill, and he, he had gone to Mexico, and he picked up some kind of bug, and he thought he was going to be able to be here, but he is not. Okay, because I saw just a moment ago that he was asking for a link, so I that part of it is what I was confused about. Yeah, he emailed me as well and said, I'm sorry, I can't make it. I'm not, he said he's really not up for it. Okay, so, so that's, yeah. that's, that's the explanation. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, this brings us to the public meeting discussion of the proposed bylaw changes, Nate. So I think you are the one who has uh, the information for us. Yeah, I can, I'll share my screen in a minute. So, you know, we were talking about um, regulating parking areas and then drainage infrastructure. The, uh, you know, there are small changes. The building commissioner provided some input. We're still thinking about how to uh, word a few things. Um, and then moving forward, if the commission likes the changes, it's a general bylaw with the town, so we would have to bring it to the town council for their review, and then it would have to go through, you know, a review of a subcommittee and get back. But I think, you know, if we if we want to forward it along after, you know, we discuss that we can. And um, let me just share my screen now. Oops. So there's, you know, what we're proposing to do is add a definition called parking areas. Mm -hmm. And it would mean, you know, new or expanded improved surface with, within the property. So it couldn't be, you know, pavement in the right of way, right? So we the local historic district only regulates things on property uh, designed to accommodate a total cumulative number of five or more parking spaces. So that way, if it's, you know, not a centralized parking area, but, you know, multiple areas. Um, and then parking areas do not include other areas such as an access drive not d designed for parking spaces. So, you know, the driveway itself or other turnarounds would not be regulated. And, um, you know, my only question was, does it need to be improved or impervious? 
like what about stone dust? But I think, you know, an improved surface doesn't, I think that um, we're not really regulating that it's on the ground plane, but it just means, you know, some parking area, right? So it could be, it could be gravel, it could be paved, but just the, an area that's designated for five or more parking spaces. Um, you know, and that's, it's not, it's regulating and it's not regulating the use, it's really regulating the area. So we'd have to be, you know, if this were to move forward, we have to be careful saying, you know, we don't like the number of spaces or we think, you know, five spaces is not enough for the proposed use. That's not what we're, we'd be looking at. It would be really how does the parking area impact the site design or the layout or the relationship of buildings to buildings or to the street. And so, um, yes. I guess my question would be five is quite large. Um, was was five parking spaces like how did that number come about? Could it be less? Because I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just thinking a dr you know we're not asking about a driveway, but you know, if it's an additional five parking spaces to a driveway, that's a very large additional asphalted area if even three parking spaces is pretty big in addition to a driveway hmm. yeah i mean i think some of it would be you know like it you know it's a total of five throughout the property so it's like you know does the commission really want to review three parking spaces i mean it, you know it could be that uh typically um there's no permits required for uh, some of this. And so the difficulty will be, how do we capture this? And typically, you know, what it might be is that there's another permit associated with it, you know, a building permit, a renovation, an ADU, a, you know, something. But mm -hmm. if someone were to go in and just increase their driveway a little bit and put some parallel parking off the side or something, we, the, the town may not hear about it typically, you know, so it's five, you know, we were saying that that's usually associated with a certain size or threshold that would trigger some review that would capture it but so nate it does it it seems like something's happened or this has come up before it's an it's been an issue before or started to be an issue could you just say a little something about the kinds of situations that arise that make this necessary yeah, I'll just say that Bruce had his hand up too. I think. Oh, sorry, Bruce. No, but um, I'll answer your question, Elizabeth. Yeah, I, you know, since the district was adopted, and I think you know, especially given the housing market and changes in Amherst, I think, although it's a residential area, there are a few instances where, say, a property turns into a rental or something happens where they they actually want to put in like fifteen parking spaces on the property. And it's no longer a residential in character. It's becoming, say, more commercial or institutional. And the parking could be on the in the front or on the side or cover the backyard. And so then really that parking area is something that is impactful to the, you know, to the neighborhood and the character of the neighborhood. And um, you know, uh I think Brookline and a few, maybe it was like Dorchester have kind of some regulations around this and they will say that the parking area should be behind the building. They don't allow it, uh, say in the front. We, you know, the town has, the zoning bylaw has other regulations, right? So you can't have um, parking in the, you know, um, in the right of way and certain things. So, um, you know, this is not as, as descriptive. And so it could be that we have some other language about no parking in the front, but that you know, I don't, you know, I think that, yeah, anyway, anyways, I think there are some, some communities are trying to consider how they do that without, you know, it's not really regulating the use of the, you know, as a parking, it's really the parking area and how visually it can disrupt the, a neighborhood or, you know. Bruce? Um, just make sure I'm, I'm not muted. A couple of things. First of all, uh, five is off the four. And or uh, uh, if we have a duplex um, with the current parking generation uh, bylaw, that amounts to four spaces. So 
it's not uncommon for us for these areas to be have houses that are converted to duplexes. And so I think five is uh, a very logical starting place because otherwise we'd be getting involved in uh, in um, all sorts of uh, considerations about whether we allow duplexes or not. Because if we were to say no to uh, say four, that we would perhaps then be fighting the zoning board and the bylaws uh, and any uh, any permitted use for a duplex. So I I just don't think we want to go the, in that direction. So I think five is is a, a very logical starting place, five or more. But then uh, um, Elizabeth, in answer to your question or further to what Nate said, I think I could give a more specific example. Um, or answer that question more specifically. And it was that, in my view anyway, that this cropped up once we got a uh, an application from, um, uh, I can't remember whether it was coal, uh, whether it was coal construction or, or, or someone for a property on, was it fearing? Yeah, and it had, it, it had to do with uh, the realization that uh, large sites could have multiple uh, primary uses. And suddenly, uh, certainly I and on the planning board then became aware, because I didn't realize this, that, uh, that you could start building uh, second and third primary uses on sites that were large enough. And, uh, and so we saw a situation uh, where we had someone who was trying to develop a site uh, in our district uh, this way, and it uh, generated a colossal amount of parking. And that was when we uh, we said, well, because this was, I, I think those of us on the committee at the time said, well, this is out of scale. Uh, this amount of parking is out of scale, and, and scale considerations are part of our purview. But parking was not specifically an item of scale uh, where we could address uh, inconsistency or inappropriateness of scale. And so what this is doing is folding that in to um, uh, what we are allowed to uh, take into consideration. So I think, Nate, that's really the answer, isn't it, to the question as to why should, why now? What happened that caused us to be interested? I think it was that development on fearing. Yeah, I, and I think that the realization that there's the zoning allows, like you said, Bruce, different or more than one use. And so the impact... You know, I, I pose this to the planners listserv throughout the state or historic listserv and a few communities said, oh, well, you know, your bylaw, and I'd have already said, I've already said this, it could like indirectly regulate parking because it's the relationship of building. So if, you know, someone's putting a parking area and it's causing a building to be set back more than say what the neighborhood has in terms of a consistent setback or relationship um, to the street, then you could indirectly say, well, you know, the building needs to come forward so then that means the parking needs to be moved. But by making it a defined term that then is something that is reviewed, it could be um, you know, looked at on its own as opposed to, you know, it kind of secondarily uh because of a you know some other design or some other structure on the property. Hmm. Anyway, I'm good with the language. Are there any other concerns about this? language. I, I think it's good. And I would like to see this resolved before 98 fearing returns to us, as Nate says it is going to. I guess an, another thought, just because like whenever we list a property, we kind of count out how many cars can get in the driveway <laughs> as parking spaces, you know, just so people kind of have an awareness before they even get to the property. So like some of these very long driveways, I mean, could be six, you know, it could be two, 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 you know, back behind each other. Um, I don't know if it matters. I'm just trying to like really make a distinction between their driveway and like making additional parking. Space, sure. Yeah. Right? No, I yeah. And I think that's a really good point because, you know, a lot of homes might have a driveway where you can stack cars and have four cars in there for your you know, for the household. And so, you know, in my mind and, you know, the building commissioner were like, does the, you know, anytime then a driveway gets repaved and it, 
gets enlarged by a foot, you know, on one side, are you, are we really going to regulate that and have it go yeah. through a permit? And so that's where, it, you know, it's excluding the access drive. Um, so it really is, you know, if there's a driveway and then they, you know, someone might make a really wide driveway and then, you know, that side part is really the parking area, right? I mean, you're not going to have a driveway that's 30 feet wide, right? That means they're going to have some of that's for parking. And so, um, we yeah. would therefore declare that that's a parking area, right? Right, right. Yeah. Do we need to specify driveway widths in order to be able to make such a declaration uh, with confidence? Uh, let me just, let me, um, I'll put a comment in um, just so we, that's a, right. Yeah, um, right, like 12 feet or, you know, eight, you know, whatever, 12 feet per yeah. sing, single lane or something like that. We could, a single aisle or something, yeah. Yeah, so the driveway is considered to be a paved area, um, a linear paved area, no wider than 12 feet. Or it could be 24 for a two-car, but yeah, I feel like we could come up with some language or something. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good point that that, that you that you make, uh, uh, Nicole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, are there I mean, other I comments it, about this? I think it sounds it sounds good. Yeah, right. So we're not going to be saying right. So you know, you have, you know, a house and you have a driveway and you right, you can stack five cars. Like that's not the parking area. That's just right. you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think if, if if there are concerns that they would have to be addressed by other parts of our bylaw or other you know the rental bylaw or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. And so then there's multiple pieces that are could be working on a property, right? It could be zoning, could be a rental or just, you know, rental bylaw. Um, and then here down in structure, we then fold in the new parking area definition, as well as an at or above grade drainage infrastructure. And I, you know, the drainage piece is a structure is defined now anyways, as a combination of materials other than a building, including a sign fence, wall, terrace, walker, driveway. And it doesn't include such things as, it, you know, so the building commissioner thinks, sure, it can include any any type of combination of materials then. So it could be like a drainage overflow structure or, yeah. you know, but I think to, we're, to put this in there uh, just clarifies it a little bit more. So, you know, we're seeing especially with new stormwater regulations getting in place where even if it is not much of a big addition to a building or a number of units, they might be putting, you know, an overflow structure in their front yard, or there's, you know, more things that we haven't, that weren't envisioned when this bylaw was adopted. And so. Yeah. Yes, I think so. I mean, for example, that's a take your front yard uh, thing. It could be that someone decides to put a thing in there and they're thinking well, well it'll be a domed structure of some sort and we say well no really uh, let's just do a, a, a you know one that's in the same plane as the lawn so it's essentially right. a lawn outlet so we're, i didn't right. necessarily think we're in the business of saying you can't put in drainage infrastructures but just that as you say we we want to have a say in what they look like and try and make them look as uh, um innocuous as possible right so i mean i don't yeah i think there's some projects where the drainage overflow is basically like a concrete box you know it's like 18 inches by 18 inches and you know to me that's a industrial commercial look but you yes. could do it on a single family home or like bruce said you could have a nice um kind of accurate grate right that yeah you know smaller and it meets the same purpose and so yeah but, like like they have at the eric carl uh museum some very nice uh, elegant simple unobtrusive uh, in inlets there right right and so I think, yeah, so to me, that's, you know, um, that's the other change. The, the only um, one was a removal of, um, we. Uh, oh, the we, membership. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we can legally say this. <laughs> <laughs> we say each member and alter member shall continue to serve in office after the expiration of their term until a successor is duly appointed and sworn in. <laughs> so, that, yeah. That's our, our Bruce Coldham. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I, 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 I'm not responsible for this. I didn't. Uh... <laughs> no, we are. <laughs> it's like Hotel California. But um, I think the, um, 
the drainage piece, the only um, thing that Rob and I, the building commissioner are talking about is um, in the exclusions, we then say uh, terraces, walks, driveways, or similar structures provided there at grade, which is somewhat inconsistent with um, the new definition. So we're thinking about how to how to word this exclusion. Um, you know, and it's it's really funny. This was a state template, but typically, you know, terraces, walks, and driveways are always at grade. And so if they're not, then there's a retaining wall, which is a structure which gets reviewed anyways. And so it's an odd, I know we were both looking at this today, thinking like, wow, this is kind of odd language. Um, you mean it's redundant? Right. So when is a terrace not at grade? I mean, if it, like I'm saying, yeah. if it, you know, because then you're essentially, if you're, it's not at grade, it means you're bringing it up with a wall or some berm, which becomes... What, what, be, what you're concerned about. Right, is what the commission is going to review anyways. And so, yeah. um, so anyways, yeah. I think that's the only other piece we'd work to get all this to be consistent. And then, you know, we could, I guess, move it forward to council. We'd have to kind of write a memo and, you know, I don't know if we'd say we'd like petition the council, but we'd ask for this to be updated. Yeah. So uh, should you bring this back to us before we write this letter to the council? Yeah, I think we could do um, one more revision mm -hmm. and then it can come back. And then, okay. you know, if you have it in Word, if you have, if anyone has any comments or anything else, you can send those to me. Okay, good. Well, thank you for working on this, Nate. I think that we all had agreed that this was necessary and this looks like it's what we probably need. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Shall we move to the next item, or did you want us to take any action on this before we move? No, I think I'll bring it back next time, and okay, maybe it'll be maybe it should be could be done then. So the next item is this the discussion of East Amherst as a potential historic district. And we do have a message from Steve on this topic. So um, he says that um, the CPA grant comes up before town council at tonight's meeting. And he met with Chris Skelly, who has agreed to complete the form Bs for all the properties in the National Historic Register, many of which are already completed or partially completed. And it's his opinion that many of the houses on Spalding um, should be included since they are of the same period and are architecturally noteworthy. I, I think I agree with that. There, we walked down Spalding, or at least some of us did, and I would agree. Um, all right, and he, yeah. He and um, Chris agreed on a commission of 18500 which would leave 1500 in the kitty for copyings and mailings. So um, that's for the committee to commission to think about. Do people have thoughts about including Spalding? Oh. I think um, it sounds nice. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you do. I just need a little refresher on Spal Spalding Street. Yeah, I was going to try to pull up a map. Oh, thanks. I have. I just pulled up the map for myself, but I'm trying to think about the housing in relation. There's other side streets too, closer, like Shumway Street. But I don't remember Shumway. What's on Shumway? Yeah. I don't remember what's on Spalding. Uh, so well, Spalding goes all the way up to uh, the power lines. I know we've yes. looked at one or two uh, houses right. um, on that street. I mean, we being, I think, the planning board. Um, oh, I'm looking. I can see them now. If you just pull up Spalding Street and then just sort of go around in a circle. Hmm. Yeah, I see. That's a very old one. Uh, there we are. I mean, I'm only, my only thought is, well, where do you draw the line? And uh, is there, the, so the question is, is there a, a, a modestly compelling reason why the line should uh, uh, be drawn? Well, so, oh, I see, it doesn't, um, doesn't go all the way up. Uh, so if this oh, map is visible here, the purple is East Amherst, and it yeah. includes, you know, properties along Main Street up to the Ithmar Conkey house here. Yeah, it didn't go up Salem Street or to Spalding, and so, you know, we said, okay, if we use this East Amherst Village as the 
as kind of the base, you know, what, how much further. So we, you know, and, and PVPC had been looking at expanding this. So we're thinking going down Pelham road, you know, next, a few more properties, yeah. maybe, you know, maybe to the North, this is um, okay. A little, you know, at hedgerow. And then, you know, the question becomes right. How much further down um, South and we had walked here. We don't think these properties to the South along the common are, it changes character. Uh, and then right there, Shumway Street, Salem, and Spalding. And so really that's kind of, to me, and like up to Aspen Chase here. So it's kind of just how much more do we add in this area? And the Historical Commission, Massachusetts Historical Commission, you know, would ask, like, how did we, there's already been a justification for the East Village, but we could say, well, we also examined these additional properties. And here is where we think, you know, 20 more properties could be added. And so. Um, is there a, an appreciable difference between uh, Spalding and Shumway Street, do you think? I think there is. I mean, Shumway is 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 is, is down flat and and uh, heads off into the uh, the the Route Nine and is uh, largely uh, student. Uh, it's, it's 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 largely, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, highly occupied uh, student, uh, highly occupied rental mm -hmm. um, in housing and uh, and and I would say that the properties have been degraded somewhat um Sorry. so this is shumway street so i think that there is a few older homes oh well, i'm wrong about that i mean i Maybe guess i'm looking on the on the west side but this the, the east side looks much better yeah so just a few homes but maybe it doesn't go all the way whereas spalding street is um you know consistently a different yeah time period yes uh, and so i mean i think that's where you know, I mean, it, to me, it looks, it does look different than Shumway. So, you know, East Amherst is one of the older centers. And so, you know, it, I guess it depends on how, what we're kind of saying the period of significance is or what the date ranges would be. Well, well what, um, go ahead. what I was going to say is, uh, it, are we deciding now whether we should include it for the purposes of study, which is an easier decision uh, than whether we are committed to making the case uh, if we've got the funds, I think we should uh, uh, do the research on these buildings if we can afford it, and then we are in a better position to make the decision. Yeah, that makes sense. Does Steve say what his thinking was? I mean, I think the Chris, problem I know seemed like they're really interesting older buildings. Yeah, I mean, I think Chris Skelly's uh, had worked for Mass Historic and is a consultant, and maybe he had been. It sounds like he must have done some research himself and determined that Spalding had some relevant properties. I mean, I, I agree. I think the planning department could also have some additional funding if we needed to get a few more properties done. And so, you know, really, I, as long as the council supports the $20,000 request, I kind of agree with Bruce. I mean, what we'd be getting would be research and new updated inventory forms on the properties. And so whether or not it becomes part of the district, we'd have, we'd actually have more research on these properties. It would just be a, a that's kind of, to me, that's the benefit of, of the CPA funds. Um, and then it becomes right. A kind of a decision of the commission and the town, how, where the boundaries are. That's kind of a secondary piece at this point, I think. That seems right to me. Does anybody disagree with that though? Mm -hmm. Is there anyone who opposes including trying to include Spalding at this point? Um, I think it's good to include it at this point. I think when it comes to justification, mm -hmm. it you know you talk about East Amherst Village, and it's not really an East Amher Amherst mm -hmm. Village. You know you don't want a misnomer. Um, is it a separate district itself? Um, I don't know, but I think it would be good to do the research, and then we'd know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think right when we had PVPC look at this, there was some. At one point, we we're saying, is there like a depot district? You know, you know, or mm -hmm. it's like where, where, where do the boundaries? You know, are they in? Do they align, or do is there some overlap? And so it is interesting because, yeah, East Amherst, it could just be that it right. It's so um, centric around the common, right? That there was a a really early East Amherst, and then mm -hmm. so yeah, this is different, mm -hmm. maybe, right. Well, let's ask Chris to go ahead and include Spalding in his research and um, accept, uh, is there any reason not to accept that 18,500 
contract? No, I, th I think once the funding gets um, approved, you know, we can't spend it until July, but we can, you know, work with, we can get a contract ready and get going right away. So good. Good. All right. I think we have a consensus then to go forward with that. Um, the next item on the agenda is mailing notification to property owners. And Nate, what did you want to say about that? Yeah, you know, it's something that hasn't happened in a while, I don't think. And so it had been, um, you know, we had kind of been sending out, uh, I don't know if this is visible, like a trifold mm -hmm. that we could put in a mail, just in a in a, a, a typical envelope that would go to um, residents with some information. And, you know, we usually we do it after, you know, in April, in spring, because um, as of January 1, all the sales from the previous year get corrected and the assessor updates the database. So all of the mailing labels should be pretty current. And so, you know, it could be that we, we might want to update something like this and then mail it out just so we, you know, just keep property owners aware that they're in local historic districts. So it's something we have, yeah. Is it accompanied with a letter? Um, because I, I could see somebody receiving this as being educated on information of Amherst, not that my house is in the local historic district, if you could kind of see the different interpretation upon re receiving it. Sure. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if this one was accompanied by a letter, but we could, that's a good idea to actually tell them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah you, I think like very could, clearly, yeah. like you're receiving this because you are in the local historic district. Right. <laughs> yes. If it's mailed in a letter, we could do that. If it's sent mm -hmm. out as a, a card, we could use a stamp, you know, like that says, um, be aware if you, uh, that you are in the district or <laughs> something like that. I mean, that might be a bit crude and clumsy, but it's a way of doing it. Yeah, I think, I think we want to make it more positive than that. Congratulations. You're in. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's clever i like that much better than my suggestion <laughs> i mean I, the stamp is the just a way of making something easy to uh yeah, didn't we talk about across, like draft uh, or something sending those to the real estate agents too so when they sell a house they can give yeah. that to potential um buyers yeah yeah i mean i i check when stuff comes on and then basically i look to see if in disclosures they say whether or not they're in the historic district I see. So, so one, of, one of them just came on and, and I had sent it to um, Nate to say that they did disclose. So it was more of kind of like backpedaling that my idea was if they didn't disclose it, then to send them the information via email, even just saying the house you just listed is in the historic district, just so you can share this with buyers. Please is put that it in. XGA McClellan? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought too. Yeah, we, yeah, I worked with, um, I've talked to the assessor and our GIS uh, manager about putting this on the property card and um, we're still working on that, you know, could go in the notes, but then it gets lost. And I was hoping to have, uh, you know, a new field or something that right. could say local historic district, but the, you know, the software that assessors use, uh, I think, I don't know if it will, you know, I don't know how difficult it is to change. It sounds like it's difficult. It has to match what the state wants. And so, you know, we've, we've had a few discussions about it, but um, with our new permitting, our building permit software, we've been listing it. So I know that at least when um, building permits or other permits now are applied for, it's, um, you know, they, we can see that, that they're in a district more easily than we could previously. So at least that it's working. Um, it'd be nice to get it on a property card though, just so you know, it's, I don't, I don't know how many people look at their property card, honestly, actually, but, you know, at least a realtor would, <laughs> as, as things change, it would be somewhere on a, somewhere public that's easy to yeah, see. Yeah, that's just it. It's much more easily accessible from the public right? Um, yeah. for us to, that's just kind of like one spot that we start with. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, there was a, after the Dickinson district had been established for like four or five years and we had consistently mailed out property owners. I think for the first four or five years, I remember a, a property came and applied for a permit. And then we said, oh, you know, you're in a local, local historic district. The owner is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm like, well, we've sent you a notice at least five times and you received, you know, some other things. And so, I, you know, I, 
either they, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, either all those half a dozen things in the mail got lost or they really didn't pay attention. Yeah, willful ignorance is not an uncommon phenomenon. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's like if I received something like that, I'd keep it, right? You know, I'd think, yeah. okay, what does that mean? Like, you know, if, so we've done this. So it's been a few years since we've done a, like a notice or something, but I, I think this year we'd, it'd be nice to do another one. And, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I do too. Okay, and then the next thing is upcoming applications uh, that we need to schedule a public hearing for. You said you had a few coming in. Yeah, 98 Fearing will be submitting an application. You know, we, they had a discussion months ago last year in the summer or fall um, but I think they're actually ready to submit an application. Um, you know, there's one for one or two for mini splits, one for new windows and a property, uh, maybe another accessory dwelling unit. And so, you know, I was thinking if we're scheduling a meeting, you know, if we, we could schedule it for like three or four weeks out and that way it could double as a public hearing because we, we do need two weeks notice for the hearing. And so... Mm. Uh, Nate, is the 98 fearing the one that we were fearing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's the one that we had looked previewed, uh, like I said, last year. And so they've changed the proposal, but it still is a second second structure on the property. Yeah. We got to get we, that parking thing in there soon. <laughs> they, yeah, it won't capture it, but I, you know, the commission has the ability to look at how massing is related to each other and spatial relationships of buildings. Mm. And we've already had an impact, clearly. So we're looking at April and like the week of the 15th or 22nd. Um, well, the 22nd is Passover, so let's not do sure. the 22nd. We, yeah, we wouldn't. Yeah. I'm just saying that week too, like if we even did, I guess so this is a Monday. Um, uh, 15th? Or, yeah, or... Um, the fifteenth is school holiday, so oh, especially if say, um, yeah, people... let's not do that then. Okay. Yeah, let me just. I, I'm just. I think. I mean, if we actually did April 29th, that would still work because we have to. It, it, you know, if that way, if it was posted on the fifteenth, we have to get the legal ad in almost a whole week before, so that only gives us people two weeks to have applications submitted, okay. um, and that would give us enough time to go back and forth and get get that taken care of okay three o'clock on the 29th works for me works for me yep i think so do we have anything else unanticipated items or public comment oh yeah let's have a look there's one member of the public here Hilda, if you want to raise your hand, I guess. All right. Hilda, did you want to say something? But, okay. No, I was just saying when I was doing some research on the properties west of Kendrick Park a couple of years ago, I did find that most of those houses that were not put in the historic district do have notifications or did then notifications on the property record card, the historical name of the house and the, probably the date it was built. That cards may have been changed since then, but at that time they were noted on, at least for that area. All right, yeah, thanks Hilda. Oh, yeah. Okay, is there anything else that people, anyone would like to raise? If not, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, <laughs> those in favor, let's see, uh, Nicole? Yes. Uh, Bruce? Yes, I usually vote by pushing the red button. <laughs> Rita? Yes. And Elizabeth? Yes. Uh, thank you, Nate, for as sure. always, for all the work you do before these meetings. Hi, Hilda. Much appreciated. And thank you, Hilda, for coming and always coming and um, yes. 
Well, yeah, good input. I, I, I think there's probably some stuff here I can write a couple paragraphs about. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe. I just looked at a property card. I didn't see the historic name, but they do have the year built. But yeah, I was, um, yeah, anyways, I'll keep working with the assessor because it'd be nice to have a clear place where it's noted that the property is in a local historic district. So. Yeah. yeah, that really would be ideal mm -hmm. for just disclosure purposes. I mean, then it's like public gets. <laughs> right, right. Also with have everything else. The houses right. that are more than 75 years old, too. People should be alerted. Yeah. That they're being regulated. Yeah, I mean that's that's for the uh demolition review. That um yeah. they that happens when they apply for a permit. But it'd be hard to put it all on um a property card. Mm -hmm. All right, well okay. thanks everyone. So April 29th, it'll likely be a hearing, probably three um applications, maybe four. Okay. So, all right. But I'm thinking good. if you send in the letter out. You can alert people besides those that are in local historic districts that they've got to beware about changes they can make. Uh, for now, we'll just stick with the district. I think it gets expensive to yeah. keep mailings. All right, so I'll so for the twenty nine two, I'll have a draft letter in the bylaw. Hopefully, in a final form, send me comments, and then we can move after that. Great. Uh, right, thanks, thank everyone. you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.